Hi, I'm Kevin Kunzman. And I'm Jenna Payesco, and this is MD Magazine News Network. It's clinical news for connected physicians. A recent survey of medical cannabis users in Minnesota found that 4 in 10 patients suffering from pain felt the drug had given them significant reduction in symptoms. The data, based on self-evaluations of 2,174 patients enrolled in the state's medical cannabis program during the last five months of 2016, was comprised of a pain, enjoyment, and general activity assessment. Results showed that 42% of patients had pain reductions of 30% or more, and nearly 25% maintained a pain reduction threshold of that stature for the duration of the study. Just less than 3% of the patients reported severe adverse effects. Researchers from a Japan-based pharmaceutical university are investigating the interaction between neuroendocrine activity and psychological stress-induced exacerbation of allergic asthma, which occur in cascaded pathological events that suggest a previously unknown neuropsychiatry phenotype in asthma. Because asthma is a heterogeneous disorder, researchers have previously based patient-specific therapies on their pathological and clinical features. This finding indicates that elements such as psychological stress may also be affecting asthma exacerbation. We've got drama beaties. Following the American College of Physicians announced change to blood sugar control guidelines for patients with type 2 diabetes last week, a joint statement from the Endocrine Society, American Diabetes Association, the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, and the American Association of Diabetes Educators called out ACP's new A1C goal levels of 7 to 8% in patients with diabetes. A representative from the Endocrine Society told MD Magazine that the guideline changes were equivalent to lumping together most diabetes patients in a nature that discredits blood sugar control goals for patients. And now for a weekly segment FDA Roundup. Let's go to Matt Hoffman, filling in for Kevin Kudzman, filling in for Matt Hoffman, who's filling in for Kevin Kudzman. Wait, Matt, what's going on? So, so much, Jenna. This week, the FDA approved Admedica's hydroxyurea tablets for the treatment of sickle cell anemia in pediatric patients aged two years and older. The tablets, which were granted priority review and orphan drug designations from the FDA previously, will hopefully treat most of the approximate 100,000 Americans currently affected by the disease. The FDA also approved Medtronic's fifth device of 2017, the Guardian Connect Continuous Glucose Monitoring System. The system is indicated for patients with diabetes aged 14 to 75 years old and will serve as the first smart standalone system of its kind, capable of keeping patients with diabetes ahead of high and low glucose events with alerts. Finally, the FDA sparked the market competition for hyperparathyroidism with the addition of two new generic versions of cynical set hydrochloride tablets. The Cenospar generics are indicated for the treatment of thyroid issue experienced by certain patients on dialysis and will be available in three base doses. There are also the ninth and 10th generics approved by the FDA this early in the year. From a few feet away, I'm Matt Hoffman with the FDA Roundup. Back to you guys. For these stories and more, visit us at mdmag.com. I'm Kevin Kunzman. And I'm Jenna Payasco. Thank you for watching.